Hello dear students, uh, once again we are going to go through carbohydrates for energy during physical exercise or sports and this is our second lecture of sports nutrition. We basically want to look at how energy is produced from carbohydrates during physical exercises. Carbohydrates are very crucial in preventing muscle glycogen depletion and the risk of hypoglycemia during prolonged exercise, which are all related to fatigue. Carbohydrates are also very essential for fueling exercise, particularly high intensity exercise. And athletes require a carbohydrate intake of about 3 to 12 grams per kilogram per day. Carbohydrates are also a versatile fuel source that are usable aerobically and anaerobically, while fat primarily is used aerobically. Importance of carbohydrates for exercise. Carbohydrates are very essential for both aerobic and anaerobic exercises. Carbohydrate metabolic pathways are also highly efficient. And muscle glycogen serves as a critical energy source. Liver glycogen is also converted into blood glucose, which fuels the muscles. Carbohydrates for fuel. Carbohydrates yield higher energy, and this makes them an excellent high-intensity um, exercise source of energy. Glucose is the blood sugar and is stored in the body as glycogen. And insulin plays the primary role of converting glucose to glycogen. During exercise, during exercise, glycogen is converted into glucose for about, from about 0 to 120 minutes of aerobic exercise. Carbohydrates mainly encompass the starches and the sugars in the food. And the glucose in the blood, if for example, the blood is containing 5 grams of glucose, some of this glucose will be converted into glycogen in the liver. And the other glycogen will be used in the muscle. About 400 grams of glycogen are stored in the muscle and about 100 grams of glycogen are stored in the liver. Carbohydrate stores. So we have two primary organs that play roles in glucose storage in the body. We have uh, the pancreas and the liver. The pancreas primarily produces two hormones, that is insulin and glucagon. Insulin has a primary role of stimulating glucose uptake from the blood. And this insulin can also stimulate glycogen formation. Once the blood glucose is low, glucagon is going to stimulate glycogen breakdown in order to generate more glucose. And a high blood sugar promotes insulin release and once this insulin is released it will have still the role of uptaking this glucose so that we don't have too much glucose in circulation and uh, a low blood sugar level promotes glucagon release and this glucagon once it's released it is going to encourage more glucose to circulate in the blood Carbohydrates intake. It's very important to match daily carbohydrate intake with training and glycogen restoration needs. Considering the variations for light and heavy training periods, one has to fine tune intake based on individual factors, such as the total energy requirements, the specific training goals, whether it's bulking versus weight loss, the training performance feedback. 
categories of carbohydrates. We have the nutrient-dense carbohydrates, and uh, these are rich sources of carbohydrates and other essential nutrients like protein, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and antioxidants. Examples of such nutrient-dense carbohydrates are breads, cereals, for example, pasta and rice. We have also fruits, starchy vegetables, legumes, and dairy. These carbohydrates are used for athletes, and they should form the base of an athlete's diet because they help to meet the various nutrient targets and provide sustained energy. Then we have the nutrient-poor carbohydrates. These carbohydrates mean are minimal or they have no other nutrients besides carbohydrates and energy. And the food sources here we have the soft drinks, energy drinks, candies, carbohydrate gels, sports drinks, and cordials. These nutrient-poor carbohydrates should not be a significant part of an athlete's regular diet. They may be used occasionally but are not ideal for overall nutrition. They can provide quick, compact carbohydrate sources around training where necessary. And then we have the high-fat carbohydrate foods. These foods contain carbohydrates but are also high in fat. For example, pastries, cakes, chips, and chocolate. And these carbohydrates are considered sometimes foods and are best avoided around training sessions. These items may not provide the ideal energy source for athletes and can also lead to digestive discomfort during exercise. Carbohydrate re recommendations. The daily carbohydrate needs are related to exercise characteristics and the athlete sport type. Acute feeding strategies are also very essential, and this may include pre-event fueling during exercise and also post-exercise recovery. Some of the carbohydrate recommendations according to activity level. For, for example, for an individual that is sedentary, carrying out little or no exercise, the carbohydrate requirements per body weight may be 2 to 3 grams per kilogram or 1 to 1.5 grams per pound. Then we have the individuals that are lightly active. They carry out light exercises or sports for 1 to 3 days per week. These ones will require about 3 to 5 grams per kilogram or 1.5 to 2.5 grams per pound. The moderately active individuals that carry out moderate intensity exercises or sports for three to five days during the week will require five to seven grams per kilogram or 2.5 to 3.5 grams per pound. Then the highly active, the ones that carry out intense exercise or sports for six to seven days per week will require 10, six to 10 grams per kilogram or three to five grams per pound. Then there are those that carry out extremely intense training and competition. The elite athletes will require eight to 12 grams per kilogram or four to six grams per pound. Carbohydrate intake timing. These carbohydrates can basically be consumed before the workout, during the exercise, and also after the exercise. Pre-exercise carbohydrate intake. Here it is recommended that a person consumes these carbohydrates about one to four hours before exercise. And the sole purpose here is to top up glycogen stores, provide readily available energy, and provide, prevent hypoglycemia, that is low blood sugar, during exercise. The recommendation, a person has to consume a meal or a snack containing complex carbohydrate, for example, oatmeal, brown rice, whole grain bread, and a small amount of protein, and should aim for 1 to 4 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight, depending on the timing and the intensity of the exercise. Carbohydrates during the exercise. Carbohydrate intake during exercise enhances endurance, 
and performance by 5 to 6 percent and also maintains blood glucose. And the intake during exercise should be at least 16 grams per hour with a maximum of 1 gram of glucose per minute and 1.7 grams per minute with multiple carbohydrates. And also during exercise, it's important to limit the carbohydrate intake during exercise may also limit endogenous carbohydrate utilization and also promote glycogen resynthesis during intermittent exercise. Then post-exercise, that is after exercise, carbohydrate intake. The timing here is immediately after exercise and within the first two hours. And the sole purpose is to replenish the glycogen stores, promote recovery, and minimize muscle pro protein breakdown. Recommendation. You have to consume a carbohydrate-rich meal or snack with a moderate amount of protein and aim for 1 to 1.2 grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight within the first 30 minutes after exercise. And this should be followed by an additional meal containing carbohydrates and protein within the next 1 to 2 hours. Gluconeogenesis. This is a process that occurs during exercise when the glucose levels are low and it solely converts the non-carbohydrate sources like the amino acids and glycerol into glucose. It also helps maintain blood glucose levels for energy and provides a backup fuel source when glycogen is depleted. It also is regulated by hormones such as glucagon and cortisol and helps prevent hypoglycemia during extended physical activity. Lactic acid or lactate. This is not always considered a waste product. Why? Because it serves as a useful role in exercise by being redirected to the liver to reform pyruvate. And this is uh, done in the Cori cycle. And this involves transporting lactate to the liver. From the liver, it will be converted back into glucose. And this glucose is transported back to the muscle for use as energy or storage as glycogen for later use. Glycogen synthesis and insulin. Glycogen is synthesized during using insulin sensitive enzyme. The high insulin levels will simulate glycogen synthesis while glycogen breakdown doesn't require energy. Factors that may affect muscle glycogen utilization. Intense exercise or exercise intensity. The training level the type of physical activity, the environmental temperature, and the pre-exercise diet. Exercise and glycogen utilization. Muscle glycogen utilization will increase as exercise intensity rises. And the influence of exercise intensity on the contribution of major substrates to energy. Glycogen depletion will also vary with the exercise intensity. The higher the intensity, the higher the utilization of glycogen. A low intensity exercise depletes glycogen slowly, while high intensity and anaerobic exercise depletes glycogen rapidly. And this muscle glycogen is very crucial for endurance athletes and middle distance runners. Optimizing glycogen stores. You can optimize glycogen stores before exercise by focusing on high carbohydrate pre-event meals such as three to four hours before, that is one to four grams per kilogram, to avoid aggressive glycogen loading. Rebind hypoglycemia can also occur due to rapid blood glucose drops after high carbohydrate intakes. Habitual carbohydrate intake. This one is the usual carbohydrate intake and depends on daily training, the session intensity and goals. The athlete's carbohydrate intake should be adjusted according to the level of training, the days of training, the session intensity and also the specific goals. Factors that influence glycogen synthesis. One is the carbohydrate intake. Sufficient dietary carbohydrates 
are very important for replenishing glycogen stores. Timing is also very important. Consuming carbohydrates post exercise will enhance glycogen synthesis. Exercise intensity. High intensity exercise depletes glycogen stores more rapidly and this will increase the need for replenishment. And then exercise duration. Longer workouts will result in greater glycogen depletion and this will necessitate more extensive synthesis. Insulin sensitivity. Insulin facilitates glycogen uptake. And then protein intake. When you combine carbohydrates with protein after exercise, they may also enhance glycogen replenishment. The training status. The trained individuals tend to have more efficient glycogen synthesis compared to the non-trained uh, counterparts. Gender. There are some studies that have suggested that gender differences in glycogen synthesis rates occur. Then sleep. The quality of sleep can also influence glycogen synthesis and recovery. Aging can also affect glycogen synthesis capacity, especially in the older adults. It will be a bit reduced. Carbohydrate core injection ingestion. When you combine carbohydrates with proteins, it influences insulin response, energy intake, and muscle protein phosphorylation. Caffeine combined with carbohydrates may have a neutral or positive impact on glucose metabolism and muscle glycogen. Mouth rinsing with carbohydrates can also enhance short duration high intensity exercises. And the effect here is likely due to a central mechanism in the brain that is related to glucose sensing in the mouth. Multiple transportable carbohydrates. There are different monosaccharides that are absorbed differently in the gut. For example, when you combine glucose and fructose, it can enhance the oxidation, of, the oxidation rate of exogenous carbohydrates during exercise up to 1.5 grams per minute. Practical recommendations. For prolonged exercise beyond two hours, a maximum of 60 grams of glucose can be ingested. And to benefit optimally, one has to consider combining different carbohydrates with different transporters, such as glucose and fructose, to reach 90 grams per hour. Ketogenic diets are a specific form of low-carbohydrate diets, which will induce ketogenesis, where the liver produces ketone bodies. These ketone bodies are very life-threatening in diabetic conditions. And there are few studies that have explored ketogenic diets and exercise performance. Nutritional ketosis can also be achieved without starvation by ingesting ketones. And fat is a very valuable energy source when in exercise intensity is not high. We have what we call keto adaptation, and it involves acute lower glycogen levels that become adapted over time. Ketone bodies increase, there is an increasing interest in ketogenic diets and ketone body supplements among athletes. And these ketone bodies are alternative energy substrates, which may alter the substrate metabolism during starvation and supplementation. And there is also insufficient evidence for ketone body role in exercise performance recommendation. So overall, you find that carbohydrates play a very critical role when it comes to exercise. And an athlete has to take this into consideration whenever they have to carry out any exercise before, during, and after the exercise. Carbohydrates have to be ingested. So this is basically what we have in carbohydrates as a source of energy for sports and exercises. Thank you.